Okay. My name is Janice Polk. I served in the Ukraine from 2005 to 2007. I was a teacher in a middle school. I One of the great memories is that I went to the Ukraine uh, the first winter there. It was the coldest winter they had in 70 years. And the home I lived in had no electricity or no water. Um, then uh, the best memory I have is the summer camp that uh, I held through the sponsorship of the Peace Corps for the orphans of my area. Hi, uh, my name is Edwin Patu. Uh, I'm a Return Peace Corps volunteer. I was in the Ukraine from 2005 to 2007. I was posted in a beautiful UNESCO site called Lviv. Uh, I was a business educator. I taught in a university and I had an awesome experience. Uh, my name is Celeste Coleman. I served in Ukraine from 2005 to 2007. I was a TEFL volunteer, so I taught English in a public school. The school was from first grade all the way to 11th grade when the... I lived with a host family for the whole two years that I was there. They did not speak any English, so I had to learn Ukrainian pretty well and I had to adapt a lot. It was a really good experience though to live with them that long. When I went there, I was a vegetarian and when I left, I was not. <laughs> um, they had a farm, um, like everyone did, all their neighbors. They had chickens, they had pigs, and they had a lot of vegetables too, beautiful organic produce there, but I, I did end up helping them, you know, on the farm and I would feed the pig and I did not participate in the, the killing of the pig, but I did sample the, the sausage that was made and it was really delicious and somehow seeing the whole process made me feel better about eating it. I don't know, <laughs> but I had a really excellent experience there. I'm still in touch with a lot of the people who I worked with, my co-workers, and the kids are grown up now. They're going into university, a lot of them. One of them has come to America, so yeah, it's just remarkable to keep in touch like that. All right, the end. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Melstead. I was in Ukraine from 2006 to 2008. It was a great experience. I wouldn't uh, think twice about doing it again. I'd do it automatically. I guess the, the, one of the things that I couldn't get used to were the pit toilets, but after I got used to them, I, would, I actually would prefer those to what we have here in the United States today. So. Start again? Okay. So my name is Heather Clancy, and I served in the beautiful country of Ukraine from 2007 to 2009, so I'm recently back, and I worked there as a TEFL which would be a teaching English as a foreign language but for most of my students English was their fourth or fifth language and which was amazing because in Ukraine uh, people spoke both Ukrainian and Russian and living in the Far East I spoke mostly Russian. I tried some Ukrainian it didn't work out very well. People were uh, usually very understanding about that sometimes. What I remember most about my service isn't really the numbers, it wasn't how well my students learned, it was I think just the basic fact of making friends with people who did not know Americans. And I think my biggest conquest other than after two years of prodding my postal workers with cakes and with flowers and with candy that uh, when I would go to the post office they would pick me first. They said, I'm sorry, but Heather's next in line. Heather the American is here. Heather, can we help you with something? Heather, you have mail today. And I'd still have to go up and ask for the key and, they, and then they'd ask me about my mail. Heather, who is the letter from? Heather, is it something good? And those truly, it, it sounds unusual, but those became some of my closest relationships where if they saw me outside the post office, they'd ask how I was or I'd see them. And it did seem strange because they didn't do that with normal Ukrainians. And I'd, I'd ask, why don't you guys go to the post office? They're so nice there. And they said, no, they're rude. Everyone at the post office is rude. I said, well, maybe you don't know them well enough. And they said, well, maybe we don't. But those were, those were my favorite ladies. And to this day, they're always going to be uh, 
a special place in my heart for the the pochta, or I'd say Nasha pochta, which is our post office. So that's all. Beautiful. I served in Ukraine. My name is Chuck McConnell. I was there from 2008 to 2010. That's about 20 years after Ukraine split from the Soviet Union and became an independent country. I was posted in a small city in southern Ukraine called Nikolaev. My circle of friends included a retired shipbuilding engineer, Igor Slepsev, and I recall fondly many experiences with Igor, but one in particular. We were sitting uh, outside drinking beer after a meeting of an English club that Igor attended that I helped with. And the conversation, Igor and I were just talking, and the conversation drifted off into the propulsion systems that he had helped to design for Soviet aircraft carriers. I know a little bit about that kind of stuff, and Igor was having fun working with technical English, and it was just, it was a nice conversation. And I was learning a lot about these steam turbine, or um, gas turbines. But all of a sudden, there was just this full stop pause. And Igor sort of leaned back from the table, and, and got this little, funny little smile, and he looked at me over his Sovietsky engineer glasses, and he said, you know, 20 years ago, they would have killed both of us for this conversation. And those are the kind of conversations you can only have as a Peace Corps volunteer because you live there. Tourists don't have those conversations. I want to talk about host families because, you know, I came back after Peace Corps service in Ukraine. I was in Ukraine 2008 to 2010. Um, my name's Chuck McConnell. Um, and everybody says, oh, it was so heroic of you to be a Peace Corps volunteer. What a challenge that is. That's nothing. That's a piece of cake. Think about the host families. In my case, I, sti I lived for three months with Svetlana and Andre. Svetlana is an MD doc. She the, runs a the pathology lab at the polyclinic um, in the city where I was. And uh, Andre is a retired geography teacher. Um, <clears throat> they agreed to accept an American into their home. What is their home? Sovietsky apartment, 320 square feet. They moved out of the bedroom and slept on the couch in the living room so that the American, their guest, could have their bedroom. They invited someone into 320 square feet that they'd never seen before from a country that they spent most of their lives afraid of, knowing that that person had no language in common with them, and they agreed to do that. That's guts. I had wonderful experiences with them. They, um, they had a dacha. Now, you, you, you think you know what dacha is. Dacha is not a mansion in the country. Dacha for Sveta and Andre was about 50 by 100 feet of dirt on the edge of town where they grew food. And one of the fun days that we had was going out and preparing that to plant in the spring. But my memory of them that is just etched and will be forever, um, Sveta and I sort of settled into a pattern after the first few weeks that I was there and had begun to learn a little Russian with the uh, Peace Corps language teachers. About once a week, maybe twice, Sveta and I would sit after dinner at the tiny table in the kitchen. It's so small, only two of us could eat there at one time. We would sit with piles of dictionaries and we'd try to have a conversation. And on one occasion, um, we, we were working with language, both of us doing the best we could, and I asked her, I said, um, Sveta, what happened at Independence in 1991 when the Soviet Union broke? And she thought about that for a second, and respecting my limited language, she said, um, Robota bez plata, Russian. It means work, no pay. And I said, oh, um, how long? And she said, eh, weeks, months. And I said, weeks, months, that must have been hard. Nah, it was hard. And then I said, how did you live with no money? And again, she was respecting my limited language, and, but she knew my experience, and she said, dacha. 
I understood. We had eaten food that they had preserved the year before from the dacha, so I understood that. But still, I was trying to comprehend this months without any pay. And I said again, it must have been hard. How did you live? Kakjizan, how did you live? And she said, dacha, again. And then I said, so hard. Here's the moment. She thought about it for a moment, and by now the sun had set outside, the kitchen was dark, and there was this one light shining down on this little tiny table. And she leaned across the table toward me, and she held out her hands. She held out one hand and she said, Robota bez plata, work no pay. She held out the other hand, she said, Gulag. <laughs> She weighed them. She took the gulag hand away and she said, Robota bez plata. What American has ever had to confront that kind of a life decision? I will sacrifice so that this will go away. Hi, my name is Alia Sherman and I was in Ukraine in September 2009 until December 2011 and my assigned town was Novokahovka which is in southern Ukraine right above Crimea. I was a secondary ed teacher. Well one thing that comes to mind is I was pretty new to Novokahovka and I was walking home from school and there was a mini bus, so we call it a marshutka. The marshutka was tipped over to its side, blocking all traffic, and I could see that there had been people in it, but passerby were just walking on by like they didn't. It wasn't a big deal. Things like that happened all the time, and I was just in shock, like, what, what is going on here? And, I guess it was my first realization of how different and underdeveloped things were there and by the time I left Ukraine those things didn't phase me at all. So it was it was interesting. It was an interesting transformation. Smith, uh, I was a volunteer in Peace Corps Ukraine from 2009 to 2011 and I was in the town of Stahanov. You can see that there. Um, and I was a teacher there, so here's a picture of some of my students. Okay. When I left, uh, that was maybe one of the most emotional days of my life, leaving Stahanov. Um, it was just a big part of my life for two years, was just you know being with uh, all my students and my colleagues and all my friends from that town. And uh, my school had a little going away party for me. Um, and they gave me just all these gifts. Um, uh, first, uh, one of my students drew a picture of me that was really amazing. Another of my friends gave me uh, this piece of art that she had made out of birch bark. Um, I got um, just so, so many little poems and uh, songs and um, yeah, it was just, it was a really great goodbye. Um, so it, it was a really good send off and I miss those guys every day. So, thank you.